everyone. Welcome to our next video series for our C-Suite dads. I'm really excited to have Ed Fraunheim with us. He is the co-author of a book called Reinventing Masculinity that totally changed how I thought about things and is influencing a lot of uh, the direction we're taking with Fathering Together, um, but also the co-founder of an organization called the Teal Team. And I'll let him kind of talk a little bit more about what Teal means uh, in, in our call today. But Ed, thank you so much for being here. Thanks so much for having me, Brian. Yeah, so uh, let's let's talk a little bit about what Teal Team is. Why Teal? What what does that help with in our business world? Sure, I'll, I'll have a sip out of my Teal coffee mug. Uh, there you I, go. Um, teal is a uh, concept uh, that comes out of the human development research, basically looking at human culture over time and um, human development. Then it's been applied to organizations as a kind of color-coded series of consciousness levels. Now that can sound kind of abstract, but basically what it means in, in the context of organizations is, is that we've gone from sort of authoritarian uh, uh, organizations where just top-down uh, control was critical. That was kind of like the church and some educational institutions. Um, then we went to more of a what was considered orange or com competitive, more cap pure capitalism uh, organizations that are about achievement and maximizing wealth. We've moved into this green territory, which is considered like the diversity and inclusion territory of let's hear from all voices. The teal level is different from the other ones insofar as it's really about organizations that are, are have three main characteristics. They're super purpose-driven and they're, their purpose evolves over time. They are about holism. So they really treat the whole person as vital and all of our connections to the planet and to, uh, other, other species, uh, and they're self-managed, which is to say they really move away from that top-down decision-making and they distribute authority and al allow people to make decisions uh, much more so than in other uh, kinds of organizations. So they're, they're self-managed, they're holistic, and they're, per they're about evolving sense of purpose. And I think that this, these kind of tail organizations are really called for today in, in a work world that's become faster, flatter, and more fairness-focused. We think about business going, uh, the business disruption happening all the time, where we need to flatten out our organizations and distribute authority to really uh, make sense of emerging threats and take advantage of opportunities. And in this, you know, in the After Me Too and the Black Lives Matter movement, we really got to understand how everybody needs to have a fair, a fair opportunity. And it's no longer okay for, for especially us white guys to have just, you know, live off our privileges that we haven't really earned. Even if we have worked hard, there's others that have not had the same opportunities. So um, that idea of uh, having a teal organization is really not about just yourself maximizing, you know, maximizing your own gains or just raking in profits. You, you're thinking more holistically and bigger picture about everybody's well-being. Um, and it's really, I think, a key to, to men succeeding and having a more satisfying life today. Yeah, I love that, especially just knowing how COVID is disrupting everything, having a new, more balanced workspace where you're not reliant on someone um, in the same way in the past or you know, in that vertical structure um, makes a lot of sense to me. I appreciate that. But you alluded to whole life and you know, many of us are working at home. Our children are in and out of our offices in ways they've never been before. Yeah. How, how do you see pain points in in the balancing of being a C-suite or a business leader with also fatherhood? Yeah, uh, great question. And I, I think that has a lot to do with what you just said is that we've now been in this period of not being able to separate our, our professional lives, our executive lives with our family lives so much. And it's really causing us to reevaluate what's important. Um, and uh, I think a lot of us guys came, rose up through the, in our careers, especially for in our 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, thinking that we had to be sort of like Superman at work. We had to like uh, save the day single-handedly. We had to be kind of stoic and not really very emotionally vulnerable. Uh, and we were really supposed to be invincible, you know? And, and so I think when, when we were dealing with uh, the, the epidemic and the, the need to sort of take care of um, very messy emotional things with our kids, say, uh, in the middle of the workday, uh, we can't have that really rigid distinction. It, it's, it, it was like this, now it's like this. I, I should have shown the fingers differently initially, but we have to like, um, and be vulnerable with our peers to say, you know what, I, I gotta leave right now because I've got a, a daughter in crisis. You can't get her math homework done, you know, and I, I need to, you know, she's in tears, sobbing. Um, 
Uh, and the, the, the funny thing is, though, when we can let go of that idea that we're trying to be the man of steel and actually become what we, we like to talk about being men of teal, which mm -hmm. is to say more uh, open to, to those emotional um, moments of, of vulnerability, of pain, uh, and, and, and being embracing our roles as fathers is as, as just as important as our roles as leaders and organizations. There's great benefit because in the old way, you know, that man of steel can come across as, as rigid, cold, and isolated when a world when our world is really calling for agility warmth and connection and so when you can show up that way as a dad as a more you know not this traditional detached stoic dad but rather the warm listening kind of dad and th those same kind of skills apply well in the work world where yeah. employees are wanting to see you know authentic leaders that that show up and, and are able to listen and and demonstrate that they have you know feelings also so it really can be a you know a great opportunity for us to move forward and, and advance both at home and at work. I think Brian, that's great. I, I just love all that you're doing. Um, and we only have a few minutes, right? So this is not the the full dissertation of Ed, but just a window into your world and what you're building with Teal and other spaces. Um, what's currently uh, what's the current project you're working on that's got you excited about giving back to dads and men in general? It's um, that's great you asked. And I, I'm exploring a, a new way of thinking about how do we get these ideas across to men that we can be a bigger, uh, we can actually have a, a wider sense of who we are as men, as dads, as executives, as, as employees. And that has to do with kind of focusing on that uh, masculinity symbol. Um, you and I have talked about this, but this sort of arrow and circle that's like the traditional masculine symbol. And what what I've been homing in on with my buddy Jim Young is that we, we men have really focused almost exclusively on the arrow, where we're, we're about strength, we're about clarity of our direction, we're about independence. And that's those are all good things, but in if we've tended to ignore all the possible benefits of this more circle concept or the this part of our identity, which is more about connection to others, vulnerability, being open, literally the O. Oh. Um, and when we can combine both. I think it allows us to have a fuller life. Uh, you know, it's our book is called Reinventing Masculinity, The Liberating Power of Compassion and Connection, the one that I co-wrote with Ed Adams. And that compassion and connection can just enrich your life so much as both a father as well as a business leader. Yeah, completely true. And really excited uh, for all of you who are listening and reading, uh, watching, excuse me, uh, to get a handle on that book. There'll be a link in the description uh, of our email for you to look at it. Um, it, it. As I said, it revolutioned a lot of what, re revolutionized a lot of what I was thinking in terms of being confined in, in my roles and, and now being more liberated in my thinking, especially in, in terms of what I want my children to have and the legacy I'm, I'm crafting for my children with my partner, right? And and to be able to be liberated in, in all senses of the word, to, to follow our dreams, to build the companies we want, to be the dads we want, there are, there are a lot of possibilities there. And so I appreciate you, Ed, for being out in the world, uh, pushing this new philosophy, so to speak. Uh, and, and for all of you listening in, um, Ed's contact information is in the description. Uh, I highly recommend you reach out to him. Any, any closing words of wisdom to leave with us before we sign off today? I just thank you to all you're doing, Brian. And I, I thank you for coming back to that idea of the confined versus liberating masculinity. And, and really, I think there, just to leave men with this concept that there is a, a bigger way to be a, a man. Uh, and we love kind of being big men, you know, and, and but we've been confined, you know, stuck yeah. on that arrows thing. And as you pointed out, there's, it, it can be, it feels really liberating to feel like you can show up in, in new ways um, and it can really help you as a dad and as a, a business leader. Awesome. Thank you, Ed. Thank you all for being here today for this episode and uh, stay tuned for next week.